We've never addressed tiebreakers in weird rules, which is a little wild because I think tiebreakers are one of the like sleeper greatest parts of all of sports. I I find them mostly unpleasant. Like oh. I, I mostly because almost every tiebreaker is a mini game of sorts where it's sort mm -hmm. of like okay, you played this very hard game. Yeah. For I don't know, three hours? Now we're gonna play just a little mini game where like maybe some parts of your team aren't even necessary. It feels a little underwhelming at points. I, I think I like them for a lot of those similar reasons, okay. but because like sports across the board are organized chaos. Yes. Tiebreakers are the most pen to paper attempts to organize said chaos. Oh, a hundred percent. Yes, it is. It is definitely somebody sat down and said, "This must end," and therefore we must devise a way for it to end. And we don't really care how compelling it is, how fair it is in some cases. I would rather we just went back to the times where we were just like, "Yeah, sometimes it's a tie, and everybody's pissed. That's fine." Again, I'm I'm choosing to see the bright side of this. <laughs> Because I'm just thinking all the people that are excited to know the 17 different ways the Ravens can make the playoffs. <laughs> That's fair. And and the alternative of, you know, like a single game tiebreaker is like, cool, I went to a baseball game for a day and a half. Thanks, baseball. <laughs> I will concede that tiebreakers are probably the least cherished part of the rule book. It is the place where you have the most free reign to be like, I don't know. What if we did the Bozo Grand Prize game to settle the sure. Super Bowl? Sure. They feel like the most free-flowing aspects of any rule book. Because as leagues change, as they grow, you add players, you run into situations, they need to add tiebreakers or reprioritize tiebreakers, which then for the sake of weird rules is really great because that means there are moments where they really didn't think through tiebreakers at all. But today, I want to focus on the NHL. Okay. For the uninitiated, the way that the standings in the NHL works is you have a record comprised of three results. Currently, it's wins, losses, and overtime losses. Back in the day, you could tie, and that was the third number. You get two points for a win, zero points for a loss, one point for an overtime loss or a tie. Those numbers get added up. That dictates where you sit in the standings and by the end of the season that determines who goes into the playoffs. Back in 1970 there were just 12 teams in the league and eight of those teams made the playoffs. So <laughs> the tiebreakers it wasn't a long list. The first tiebreaker after points was wins. They fortunately saw well if they have the same number of points there's a good chance they could also have the same number of wins. So from there, we will say tiebreaker number three, goals scored. That's all we need to really think about for That's it? the sake of this story. Okay. And we should say for context, the modern tiebreakers, at least like the NFL is probably where I am most familiar with them. And mm. they get down to like average temperature of kickoff, average temper temperature of kickoff in divisional games. Shortness of playbook was an interesting one. Maybe that's the 27th tiebreaker, but it might be there. So jumping ahead to the end of the 1969-1970 season, mm -hmm. the Montreal Canadiens and the New York Rangers are vying for the final spot in the East. Okay. Montreal has one more win than New York heading into that final day. If New York wins and Montreal loses, then they end with the exact same record. Right. So both in total points, and number wins. of wins, it comes down to goals scored. Right. Entering the final day, Montreal has a five-goal edge. Okay, so so the only way that New York can leapfrog them is Montreal loss, New York win, and New York scores five goals more than Montreal does on the yes. final day. Okay. To put one more thing into Montreal's favor, mm -hmm. New York's game was in the afternoon. Montreal's game was at night. Okay. So by the time Montreal's game starts, they know ex the exact situation that they're playing for. Now, to give New York a slight edge, New York's opponent is a Detroit Red Wings team that the previous day locked up their playoff spot and spent that night partying to the point where a few players need to rest for a game that doesn't matter to them. Sure. Montreal's opponent is a Chicago team competing for the number one overall seed. Okay. So New York has the first game. They manage to put Montreal into the worst case scenario. They beat Detroit nine to five. 
<laughs> so not only making up the five goal deficit that seemed absolutely impossible yes. going into the game, but tacking four goals on top of that against a hungover and not trying Red Wings team. Dolly Parton, the Red Wings, basically. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Good move. <laughs> so then it shifts over to Montreal. Again, they control their own fate. A tie gets them in. A win gets them in. Montreal's game against Chicago very quickly goes out of hand for the Habs. They're down 4 nothing before they can get on the oh board. Oh, my God. They make it 4-2. to two. Mm-hmm. Chicago puts one more on to get it to 5-2 with 10 minutes left. So... You need to win, you need to tie, or you need to score five goals. And you would need three more goals just to tie. So what would you do? Is there some way I can start a fight that, like, postpones this game entirely? (laughs) Can I just, like, kick this can as far down the road as possible and maybe eliminate it from even existing? Unable to find that move on the fly. Mm -hmm. With ten minutes left, Montreal pulls their goalie. Okay, sure. You have literally nothing to lose at this point. It is the only option you have left. Get a sixth skater on the ice, hoping to get three goals against a team that ultimately a win helps them. Mm-hmm. But it's it's not. Like it's not. Come li- down to it's a not BCS formula. Right. It means much more to Montreal. But you would not have known that by the final. <laughs> How bad are we talking? While Montreal is doing everything they can to score, everything they can to stay in the offensive zone. With an extra skater on the ice, Chicago manages to hang five empty net goals on the Canadians. Wow. Chicago. Wow. By the time the final horn sounds, it was 10 2. And yet, <laughs> there was no other, there was nothing else to do. Like, I, it, this, is, this sucks because so often in sports, when something goes super wrong, it's easy to say, oh, if you had done this and that, or if you'd tried this instead of that, Something else might have happened. But, like, mm-hmm. other than set the arena on fire so that the game can't be completed. No, you're, you're totally right. It's like you don't have a play to get out of a three-goal deficit against a team that's better than you. Is this the least Hollywood a hockey game has ever finished? Because, like, it has all the classic elements of, like, okay, this is win-or-go-home situation. And we're sure. in a big hole. And we have to do this, like, crazy underdog move. I, what I like... <laughs> Picturing this movie is the ending being really celebratory for them losing 10-5. Yes. (laughs) Because they have five goals is all they needed. (laughs) Screw it. Give them every empty net goal. 200 to Mm 5 would have got them into the playoffs. That's true. And they couldn't get one. Was Chicago just pissed? Montreal was pissed at the end of this. Okay. That's for goddamn sure. (laughs) They were so pissed off at Detroit. Yeah. They were like, they had an agreement with New York. Oh, these these teams were in cahoots. What were the cahoots? We will try to win? That's that's not cahoots. That's what happens in every hockey game. You can't be in cahoots to be like, hey, will you try to beat them? Yes, that's our job. Will you also try to stop them from scoring? Again, part of our job. It's also like nine to five is not is not enough to be like, oh, the fix was in. You know what I mean? Right. If it's a like, over team scores five. Right. It's like five is still a lot to give up. Five is still like, mm, this felt this felt like you needed the nine. This was actually, you'll you'll be shocked. This was the first time that they ever needed that goal scored tiebreaker. <laughs> and boy did they quickly see maybe that one's not the tiebreaker it, we wanted. It creates some strange incentives, potentially. A little bit. For the following NHL season, they adopted head-to-head results as the second tiebreaker after wins. What did the Rangers end up doing in the playoffs that year? Oh, they they lost in the first round. <laughs> they lost, uh, I think it was 4-2 against the Bruins, which this this was the year of uh, flying Bobby Orr. So, so they accomplished everything they set their minds to. They made the playoffs, and they made Montreal lose their absolute minds. And that was it. Yes. The rest yeah. was a formality. Hey, thanks for watching. I realize um, we've kind of done tiebreaker videos before. I just wasn't thinking of them as tiebreakers. I guess a lot of things are tiebreakers. Anyway, I think you'll enjoy this video. And if not, well, I hope you find what you're looking for. 
Please subscribe, comment, like, all that stuff, and we'll see you soon.